Hello, everyone. My name is Joseph Capaletti. I'm an applications engineer here with Unitronics. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on data logging. At the core of our products, we have many opportunities for observing, recording, and manipulating data. So we will be reviewing some of the different techniques and practices that we support, as well as functionality for CFR 21 Part 11 compliance. After we have discussed some of the different practices, we'll also take some time to demonstrate our local data logging options. To give us an overview, our PLCs have several outlets for data storage. Information can be recorded or monitored locally on the PLC through data tables, data samplers, message composer, and our built-in alarms tools. Our no-code IIoT cloud solution, UniCloud, has many features for storing and manipulating information that has been securely communicated by an internet-connected PLC. And we'll be discussing the different protocols that can be used to communicate with third-party SCADA or IIoT systems such as Modbus, SQL, and MQTT. We can also connect to or host an FTP server for sharing records or recipes created and exported by the PLC. To begin, data tables are easy to define with their own set of function blocks available in the ladder's toolbox. Records can be exported from the PLC to the SD card, as well as imported from a CSV and Excel format. Users can view or edit the data through the PLC's UniApps or the data table HMI element. Lastly, building into the data table's exporting functions, we can digitally sign to ensure that records have not been changed or tampered with after creation. Next, the data sampler is another tool available for monitoring multiple feeds of information, such as IO values or PLC tags. This data is recorded at fixed intervals directly onto the SD card, where it can be either exported into a CSV format or graphed into the HMI with the trend widget as shown here. The alarms function has integrated tools to notify machine operators of alarms and events through a set of built-in HMI displays. When the event or alarm is passed, the alarm name, ID, severity, and date time are all recorded to the PLC's SD card and viewed on the alarm history screen. When the alarm log reaches 10,000 rows, a zipped file is automatically created and stored within the same SD card directory, ready to be exported or viewed. Very sorry, everybody, just having a little bit of technical difficulties here. All right, just to pick up where we left off here. So, although it's typically used to communicate with external devices, uh, by building your communication protocol, we can also use Message Composer to create or read CSV files on the SD card. Once the message structure is created and built with live data, we can make a CSV file for later reference or export. UniCloud was designed for transparent integration crafted for secure encrypted communications to an easy to customize service. A Unitronic service that offers multiple formats of data visualization, aggregation, and analytics, as well as remote access to any application, HMI display, and data. When adding IoT capabilities, you are centralizing all your data collection and management into a secure and accessible location to be analyzed. Control. No cloud expertise is required to build your Unicloud environment and your customized dashboards are built with drag and drop functionality that will even support multiple languages. If you are interested in this service, please visit unitronics.cloud for more information. MQTT or Message Queuing Telemetry Transport works off a published subscribe structure with information disseminating from the publisher down to the subscribers 
through a broker over a TCP IP connection. So a publisher is sending messages according to topics to specific brokers. The broker itself acts as a switchboard, accepting messages from publishers on specific topics and sending them to the subscri subscribers of those topics. This is a common protocol for communicating with SCADA systems as well as IIoT devices. And the Unistream can act as both the publisher or the subscriber. However, a third-party broker will still need to be established. Structured Query Language, or SQL, is an industry standard protocol for accessing and manipulating databases. The Unistream can act as a client to your SQL servers where queries are built and executed via ladder function. In addition to the singular tag communication, entire data tables that are operating locally on the PLC can be connected to your SQL database. Modbus is one of the most common protocols being used today. It's an industry standard and can be communicated both via RTU and TCP networks. Created with a client-server dynamic, the client sends both data and requests to the connected servers. The Unistream can act as both the client and server, and communication is easily configured in the project. Rather than programmed, we have a simple periodic operations to read and write data to and from the devices, as well as aperiodic commands, which can be triggered via ladder conditions. Although Modbus isn't a direct means for data logging, it is a common vehicle for transporting information between your field devices and your SCADA systems. Lastly, before we begin some demonstration, we'll discuss File Transfer Protocol, or FTP. FTP is a communication protocol used for transferring files from a server to a client over an Ethernet communication. Data tables, sampler logs, PDFs, or CSV files, just to name a few, can be shared between devices over the FTP network. Since the Unistream can act as either a client or server, you can build your application to log your data directly to your third-party FTP server. Or alternatively, you can use a third-party FTP client to connect to your PLC's SD card where logs have been stored. Okay, so at this time, uh, we're going to do some demonstration here. We're going to build a data table for a Unistream project. Uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to enter those into the questions section. Uh, we will be reviewing those at the end. Um, let's go ahead and begin. All right. So we'll be starting out here with just an empty project. First things first, is I'm just gonna update the PLC models information here. And as always, we want to verify that we do have a good communication with our device. So ping was successful, we can move forward. So our goal here in this demonstration is to have a data table where we can enter information on the HMI. And as required, we can read that information also onto the HMI. Um, so this is very basic data table functionality. Um, and by that, I mean, this can be transformed into any other project needs that you may have. To begin, we need to define a struct that can be used to uh, call out our columns for our data table. Under our structs tab, we can define a new struct. I will call this our data entry struct. 
And now I need to define the struct members. I'm going to be entering a number value. I'm just gonna call this a number, a text value. I'm gonna change this to an ASCII string. Set this to 20. I'll call this our text. And lastly, we'll have a bit, which I will be calling the bit. These three values exist only within this struct definition. As of right now, there are no global tags that fit this description that we've defined. If we wanted to access these, we would have to create a global instance of it. Uh, before we do that, we're going to define the actual data table. Here under the Solution Explorer, we can find data tables and we can add a new data table. Here on the right side, we have the properties for our data table. We have the name, we have the type, first in, first out, last in, first out, data table indexed. We're gonna be using the data table index since we will be searching and reading values from this data table at different indexes. If we wanted to have these values retained through power cycles, uh, we could check this box right here. We also have the number of rows definition. I'm going to set the number of rows for this data table to 10. And then I need to select the struct or column definition. We have some system structs that are already defined, such as the can sniffer, the system error. Uh, in this instance, we're gonna be using the struct that I just defined, the data entry. Once I've selected that, we see the columns have all been changed to the names for each of the struct members that I've defined. We have a number value here, we have a text value here, and we have a bit. Index showing from zero to nine, representing the 10 rows of our data table. Now, in order to interact with this data table in any way, to read or write, I will need global instances of our struct where these values will be either read to or read from or written to. So I'll navigate to my global tab. I'll add in a new tag. And as we've created the struct, we've also defined a new tag type. So I scroll down to the tag types, I will see the data entry. And I will call this my write data. I'll select save. And now I have a write data tag created under the data entry struct with the three tags that I've previously defined as the struct members. Here on my HMI, I can start adding values or elements that will be tagged or linked to these new struct members that will be used to write to our data table. First, I'll add a text element using a text box. Oops. Define the area that this will be occupying. Here I'll uncheck the read only box since I will be writing values into this. And I'll change what the tag link is. This is my write data struct, the text value. Next, I'll add in a number value to represent my struct's number member. Use a numeric box. Place this underneath it. Once again, I'll uncheck the read only box. Go to my write data struct and select number. And lastly, I wanna have some representation here for my bits or binary value. To do that, I'm going to use one of our binary image elements. Place this directly underneath.
I'll set the tag link. This is going to be our write data bit. I'll change the collection here to be some LEDs from our Unipix library. I'll have the off light for the zero value and the yellow light for the on value. Last thing I'll need to do for these values is just give actions to this last one here, the on or off. I'll give us an action to toggle this bit. That will set as the write data Oops. bit whenever it is pressed. Now we have three elements on our HMI that we can interact with. We'll be able to enter text, enter a number value, and by tapping on this light, we'll be able to turn it on or off, also enabling and disabling the bit associated with it. Now we are still missing an element here that we'll be using as a trigger to write our values into our data table. So I will add a button underneath. I'll struggle, struggle with my touchpad. There we go. Now this button is gonna be used as a write to table function. So I will do a write to table for the text label. And I'll add an action to this. I'm going to set a new tag. So I'll press on, press on the blue pencil here. And I'll create a bit called write to data table. We don't have any ladder functionality to support any of this yet. So we'll be getting to that in a moment. All right, so with the HMI built, I'm gonna add one more element here just so we can visualize this data on the HMI. I'm gonna add a data table element, and this will be linked to our table one. This way, as we add values to it, we'll be able to see those values entered in on the HMI. Excellent, so let's go ahead and build our ladder functionality here to write to our data table. I'm gonna to go to my function one. First thing I'm gonna use is our direct contact. And this will be linked to our newly defined tag, the write to data table. We're gonna use this as a condition in our project to trigger a function block that will write the values currently entered into our write data struct into our data table. I'll go to my data table indexed here in the toolbox and I'll do the write row to DTI. Gotta love touchpads. There we go. Now we have three parameters that we can set for this. First is gonna be the data table target. You can select the table one, as this is the table we wanna write values to. Next up, we have our source struct. This will be the, the struct that we've defined that contains the information that we wanna to write to our data table. The only options that we'll have are whatever global tags or global structs we've defined that use the same struct. Notice that we do have other structs to find here in my global tags, but none of those are available because they are not the same struct, the data entry struct. 
Lastly, we have a row number. Uh, this will be a pointer value that we'll use to increment through the index values. So I'm going to define a new one for this. My right row pointer. And this can be any of our integer values here. I'm going to use an int 8. Excellent. So after that right row is completed, what we're going to do is increment that right row pointer value. So if it's zero after it writes to the data table, it will increment to one. So next time we write to the data table, it will be not overwriting our previous data, but now incrementing to a new index value of our table. So to do this, I'll go to my math section of our table. I'll add in an increment. drag this to our next function. I'll list this to our right row pointer. And after this process is complete, we can reset our right row to data table bit. So I'll use a reset coil here under our basic elements. And I'll tie this to our right to data table bit. Now the ladder has been successfully built for reading and writing t information to and from our data table. I'm sorry, just to our data table. If you'd like to read any of this information to use in any of our other ladder functionality, uh, we would have to essentially start from our uh, creation of a new struct and our HMI again. So to do this, we'll go back to our HMI. And a lot of this information is going to be the same. We're going to have a text value, a number value, and we're going to have a bit, a, a, a button here that we'll use to identify when we want to read values or read information. So I'm going to fast track through this. I'm just going to do a control C, control V, place this down below. And I'm just going to do a little bit of resizing here. So let's go ahead and create a new instance of our struct by adding a new tag. Once again, this will be a tag type that we have defined, the data entry struct. And this will be our read from data table. Now, these values that I have copied onto our HMI, I can re-tag them from the write to data table structs to the read from data table. Oop, messed up our naming convention here. I'm just going to fix that. The read data struct. So again, I'm just going to re-tag them. This is the read data number. This will now be the read data text. Our read data bit. And now we can define a new bit for this button here. to read from our data table. I'll change the action from write to data table. 
to read from data table. That's why I renamed the previous one. The last thing I'll need to add here is just a pointer value so we can identify which rows we want to read into the HMI. Uh, so I'm going to add one more number element. Down below, I'll create a new numeric value. I'll call this our read index. Any of our number types will work here. I'll just use the int eight. And I'll uncheck the read only box. Since these values are gonna be read from the data table, we can actually change this from read only or back to read only and remove any of the actions from the button or from the binary image. All right, back to our function. Our next ladder here is gonna look very similar. We're gonna have a direct contact. This will be our read data, our read from data table. Rather than using the write row to DTI, we'll be using the read row. These parameters are gonna be matching, but you can notice that we have an output this time. This will be the struct target. So first we'll define the table we wanna identify. Next, we have the row number that we do want to read from the data table. This will be the pointer value that we just defined, the read row index. Next, we have the struct that we just defined, and this will be the read data. going to be incrementing this value and we're going to be setting this in the HMI. All we'll need to do here is add a reset coil for the read from data table. And we should be good to go. For this project, I've also enabled VNC, so we'll be able to view the HMI as I interact with it on the on the screen. Uh, again, that's the VNC server management, and I'll be using a real VNC software. Go ahead and perform a download. And just a reminder, as this is downloading, if you have any questions, please feel free to add those to our questions section. I'll be taking a look at those at the very end.
All right, here we have the project finalized. Now we can enter in values into our table. This will be our text box. So I'll enter in some new text. I'll enter in a number value. And I'll enable the light. I will write that to table and we can see that value has just been written to index zero. If I enter any new values to this, let's add in some exclamation points. We can see these values updating on the data table. Now, if I'd like to read any of these values, either for any of our projects or for our HMI, I can edit what index value I want to read. I'll change this to one, and I'll read from data table. You can see just as we have above, the value number 22, hello world, with the light off. You can change this to zero, and now it's updated to reflect index zero of our data table. So this is a brief introduction here to our data tables. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to add that to our questions section. Happy to take a look at them. We hang out here for a minute. There will be a recording of this webinar sent out, so you will have another copy of this available. Um, and we do have other resources that are readily available for any of our data table functionality. Uh, we have a great YouTube channel with playlists that are covered very extensively. Um, all of the protocols that I've, I've brought up before, Modbus, FTP, um, as well as our help file here in Unilogic uh, or even Visilogic, which can help navigate through any of the features of our software. All right, not seeing any new questions here. If you do have any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team at support at unitronics.com. You can also always give us a call. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll be in touch soon with a copy of this webinar. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day.